Hi, welcome back to another episode of Art with Reese. Um, this episode is going to concern uh, a more topical subject matter, which is that of elections. So to start with, we need to kind of conceptualize what elections are. We'll have our piece of paper here, our blank canvas for what a country starts out as before it's actually a country. In this case, the United States of America. Um, because that is really where elections take place. Um, they're not really known to take place in other places. Um, it is a uniquely American tradition. So we'll start off with taking, you know, some colors that are uh, particularly uh, resonant with the United States, uh, being red, white, and blue, obviously. So, you know, we're going to draw some stars just to start with um, some important symbolism uh, for the United States and America as a whole. And as you can see, mine are quite exceptional in their accurateness. Um, however, you don't need to try to ascribe to reaching impossible standards that I am setting for you. So we have our stars here, uh, important symbols of American ideology and appearances. We're going to kind of do some rough rough looks here, uh, a sort of abstract take on the American flag. Um, and again, as per usual, I'm using oil pastels in this instance. You of course don't have to use oil pastels. You can use whatever stupid idea of a, a medium you'd like to use. Um, if you think you know better than me, then Maybe you should be watching something else or making your own show. Otherwise, why are you watching? Do you think you have different ideas than, than me? So that's a pretty good example of a flag right there. We're going to grab a blue here to make the upper part of the flag. You know, and this is where... This is where the stars usually are located and are in this blue and in fact we're going to take the blue just run it across the entire top here because this isn't supposed to be a perfect flag it's supposed to be sort of an echo of the flag um, because what this is really about is not about America at its core but rather about the democratic process the democratic system and in an election you have you have different candidates, you have multiple different candidates. Um, ultimately it's really two, because no one really cares about the other ones, um, besides just the, the two main parties. The others are kind of there at the beginning for entertainment, sort of to boost morale and kind of put into context, you know, just how popular the two uh, primary candidates um, are in these elections uh, while you know the remaining 20 or so are complete jokes so what we need to do is kind of show this this clash of two opposing forces two opposing sides um, that are fighting for one common goal and the goal being you know the good of the American people and the good of America this this great country and nation of ours you know, but they both want to go about it different ways, completely different ways. One being completely, absolutely right, and the other being completely, absolutely wrong. So, you know, we have another candidate who has, we'll say, taken a look at this, and, and so we'll call this candidate the, the intelligent candidate, the candidate who's right. Uh, this candidate sees this flag, and they say, you know, this is great. Uh, this is exactly the kind of America I'm dreaming of. Um, I'm all for it. So I'm just going to put my little mark in here, you know, just going to add to this great, great big pie of American discourse. But next we have the other candidate, you know, the candidate who's, who's not right at all, is completely wrong. And they're going to come in and say, well, gee, I think everything should be for everyone. And the United States is, is a country that's for everybody and that anyone can just walk in here. 
I'm just, I think every color is just fine. I'm anti-America. So they're just gonna throw in some orange in here. Something totally off the mark. Completely off American brand. So here they are sullying the good name and nature of the nation with their own take on, you know, what they thought the founding fathers uh, thought things should look like. Well, the other candidate says, hey, that's not, that's not right. Um, you know, that's incorrect. But you're, you're, this orange doesn't belong in our, our flag. It doesn't belong in our nation's colors. So they go in and they throw in a little more blue. Because they're like, I need to, I guess, do a little more of a vocal, I, I need to be more vocal and do a better job of getting across, you know, our forefathers, our founding fathers' ideals, this is what they really wanted here. And maybe the other candidate, you know, just doesn't see it. Maybe they just don't understand that other political party are just full of a bunch of dum-dums. So they start going a little wild with it, and yeah, it's kind of running a little bit, getting a bit of purple in there because of the red and the blue mixing, but it's really their patriotism that's fooling all of this um, and keeping uh, keeping things passionate, albeit with a, a little bit of a, you know color casualty, so to speak. So they say, okay, well we've kind of illustrated a little bit better. This is blue, this is red, and this is white. These are our colors. Well, the other candidate takes one look and says, oh. Looks like we're trying to go back in time to the good old days. That's not what the Founding Fathers wanted. And in fact, we need to make this, this nation really great. So I'm gonna throw in some pink here because we do need equality for all. We need to grant toasters just as many rights as you know we grant pigs and as we grant minorities. Obviously influenced by uh, propagandists and lobbyists from Washington and across the nation for private corporations just trying to get across their own personal message which is distinctly anti-American. Well the original candidate goes back, um, the candidate who's right from the correct party and says clearly this isn't this isn't getting across. This is this is red, white, blue. Red white and blue thank you very much this is not a nation that was made by a bunch of colorblind lunatics this was rather made by a bunch of stylishly savvy wig wearing badasses you know they're trying not to be rude they're trying to give the other candidate and party the benefit of the doubt like well you know they're just they're just misinformed they're they're uneducated. If I throw in some more of those original colors, make it even louder, really remind everyone that this is the United States of America in this picture. You know, maybe that will, uh, you know, kind of snap some sense into people. Here. Really just go into town with the blues here. Really really trying to drive home the fact that this is America. This is about America. We have these colors that just don't run. You know, and if your pastels are starting to kind of uh, get worn down a little bit, of course, you can tear the paper, sometimes it's necessary. Um, in order to, you know, uh, continue forward with uh, your your original intention here. So, continuing forth, the correct candidate is really getting that blue in there, really, really throwing the blues down, and having a lot to say really trying to honor the foundations of this great nation of ours. And 
so clearly it's marked enough it should be clear enough that this is red white blue the other candidate should understand by now right well the other candidate takes one look and says no quashing my freedom for you this is going to be a free nation and as a free nation I'm free to use whatever colors I want and in fact to be more inclusive we're gonna add some green in here so this lime green this baby lime green and sometimes it's important to rock the boat on um, there these traditionalists um, kind of just dinosauring around so the original candidate goes back and says, well, I see that this is getting nowhere. I'm getting a little mad because you're just coming across as downright disrespectful uh, uh, towards my country and towards my founding fathers. So I'm going to go ahead and get over those stars because those stars are distinctly not patriotic. So we're going to kind of reinforce the red, white, and blue here. I just cut, carved right across those stars because it's a desecration of the American flag. It's a desecration of uh, the what our, our our founding fathers fought and died for. Um, what your your grandparents, your great 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 grandmother went to war to fight about. So the original the, the candidate who is wrong in this scenario here um, with their radical leaning comes back and says oh well it looks like you're trying to quash my freedoms right here okay you talk about freedom and here you are quashing mine well guess what doesn't matter people are speaking so if I want to make this purple I'm gonna make this purple well the the correct candidate is going to go back and say, Oh, well, I see that you're just even more so disrespecting my country. Um, and you know what? You are really just kind of, you're kind of making things difficult um, for American society here. So they're going to kind of go back and they're going to try to kind of go over that purple. All those colors that the other person uh, have had thrown in here try to cover it up but of course that person did it with permanent colors they're gonna take uh, we're gonna take some black to try to just color out completely what this other people have done just get it out of there it can't be un it can't be erased. The damage has been done. It's on the news. We're not going to have this kind of disrespect. We're not going to tolerate this sort of disrespect um, in our nation. Not going to happen. Not my country. So if this can't be a flag of respect, then it's not going to be a flag at all. Well, the original candidate comes back and says, Oh, it looks like you're completely disrespecting um, everything I'm trying to introduce, and I speak on, of course, on behalf of the people. So fine, you want blue, you want red, you want white, well, I'll give you blue, red, and white. Here's some blue. Are you happy with it? This is what you asked for. Exactly these colors. Here, have some more blue. Yeah, Viva America. Viva America. Soy Americana. And again, you know, don't ever hesitate to kind of twirl this around in the canvas so you can get to the different angles. But it's absolutely disgusting how you have a candidate who thinks that he can just waltz in there and think that he has the right answers. When of course, who is he? He's a joke, you know? But why, why does he not realize that the other candidate is absolutely 100% right? And I don't understand when I'm talking to my different family members, my different friends, why they can't see why the one candidate is just pure fucking evil, just, just a fucking monster, turd, piece of shit person. It, they don't see that. Instead, they think that 
the, the, the candidate who actually cares is the monster, and that they're the ones who, who, who are, are trying to ruin this country, when really they're the ones espousing, you know, real political American values. And, and my family can't even see it, you know. Uh, I, I have my, my war veteran friends don't see it, and they were part of it. And that's where I look at them and I say that you're part of the problem. You're definitely not part of the solution. Were you even in the war? And I'm sorry, but it doesn't matter if you are a war hero or not. Um, if you talk badly about my country, if you talk badly about its leadership and about the Founding Fathers, then you might as well go and die where you lost your legs. Go back to Canada. Go back to your other stupid European, Islamic, pro-Israeli, Indian, Africa countries and just fucking, you know, leave us alone. Let America continue forth, you know? It just, I can't even stand it. I won't even talk to them. I block them on my phone. I block them on all of my social media. I had to just get off of social media because I can't stand listening to them. All this fucking garbage, the stupid fucking news and the stupid fucking bullshit. And there we have it. Uh, we have kind of a diverse look at the uh, American landscape and what a, a melting pot of America really can bring to the table. Uh, the election cycle, it's messy. Elections are a messy business, a distinctly American business, but they're really what make this country so great. And so keeping that in mind, uh, we can really personify an election and uh, this this really great process that we, we need to continue to defend um, until the day that we die. This has been another episode of Art with Lease. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you have a great election cycle and a great evening. And stay away from the haters and the anti-Americans among us. Take care. Bye.